Eureka, you found us. Welcome to the Checkout California Radio Show, your key to California hospitality. Hosted by Rad Gantos, principal of Rad Gantos and Associates, a hospitality and commercial real estate design firm, and Craig Sullivan, executive vice president of ParkWest GC, a hospitality and commercial real estate general contractor. Checkout California is focused on our state's hospitality, travel, and tourism markets, and on the large part they play in California's vibrant and innovative economic diversity and unique quality of life. Now, here are your hosts, Rad Gantos and Craig Sullivan. Good afternoon. I'm Craig Sullivan. And I'm Rod Gantos. Welcome to Check Out California. You know, we've got uh, Mr. Rod Apodaca, Senior Vice President of CBRE Hotels in the house again. And we've got a very full house today if you're watching us live. Um, Rod's here to make several announcements, and one of them is to introduce his new hospitality team. Rod, thank you for joining us, and welcome, everybody, if you would kindly introduce your sure. team. Craig, Rad, thank you for having us back. Pleasure. Appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Engineer. Um, let me lower this just a tad. So I wanted to come in today for a couple of reasons. Wanted to re-update the market, uh, up, re-update you on the market and what's happening, and also more Great. importantly, introduce you to um, an expansion to our Southern California team. Um, we've brought on Michael Jockey, who will be based in the downtown LA office, and Matthew Inman over there in the corner, if you can see him, who is based in Newport Beach. Um, I'll give them, let them give a inter- little introduction, but just. As a heads up, they will be focusing on 15 million and below price range, which is kind of a mid-tier right. uh, market space that is very active in Southern California. And um, Michael, I'll let you take the lead on your introduction. Hey, I'm Michael Jockey, I'm with CBRE, based in the uh, downtown LA office. I focus on LA County and north up to Santa Barbara. Thank you, Mr. Engineer. <laughs> Trying to get all the mics set here, right? We didn't have time to <laughs> yeah, test them here. He, he gets go. a little handy over there. Yeah. <laughs> the hand comes into the picture. So uh, Matthew and I are focusing, again, on 15 million and under, uh, a sector that we see a lot of uh, supply in. It's Great. traditionally been uh, a bit underserved yeah. in terms of uh, what's really out there for, uh, for the brokerage. So, Matt, I'll let you get to it. Yeah, thank you. First of all, I want to say thanks. Uh, it's nice to be here with uh, OC Talk Radio. Um, you know, my name is Matt Inman. I'm most recently joining from a company called 10X Commercial, where I headed up the hospitality team. It was a national team focusing, uh, again, 100% on hotel product, and that was in the mid-market space. So we were selling hotels in the 5 to 20 range. Mm-hmm. And so what I wanted to do, and I saw the opportunity to, to, to join forces with Rod and CBRE Hotels, is really attack the, the same market space, but with a global platform with all the, uh, you know, the world-class resources that CBRE has and really drive outcomes for the clients here in the Southern California market space. Again, in that mid-market, I'm specifically focusing on San Diego, Orange County, and the Inland Empire, and I'm based out of the Newport Beach office. Wonderful. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. That's great. I mean, you've got uh, quite a nice territory for that Mm -hmm. $15 million and below, so, you know, you... uh, you, you guys should stay very, very busy over the next uh, at least 24 months. So, Absolutely. You know, it's in your experience over at 10X. And, Michael, where were you at prior to this? I was. Uh, I come from an underwriting background, wow. but um, I grew up in the, the hospitality industry. My family is coming from hospitality developers. Matt. So. Very good. So it's it's in your DNA like it is with everybody else. So <laughs> that's great. Um, congratulations to all of you and Rod. I you know I'm, I'm really excited about this team that you've created mm. and the things that you're going to be doing. And and Matthew, I think I, I couldn't agree more with you about having the global platform. Um, I'm very familiar with 10X. I remember it under its old name and. One of my compadres from publicly held corporate America uh, went over there for a long time as well. So, uh, congratulations again. That's great. I, yeah, I really appreciate it. I, you know, you, you you've got a master, Rod and I. We go back close to twenty years. Yeah, pretty, so, pretty long. Yeah, so and, and, and we like still talk, admit, and we yeah, you know, <laughs> we just haven't gone surfing in a while. So we'll we'll need to to pick that up again. But you know, it's. Uh, Rod is is one of the 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 true 
perfectionist when it comes to being a hotel broker, and I mean that in a in the highest esteem possible because I watch you and I I listen and I learn and I and I see things that you do that nobody else is doing and you're closing deals constantly and you know you're you're your body of work especially since coming on board at CBRE is is you know second to none it really you know is is impressive what you've been doing out there and i think you know with michael and matthew joining you it's 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 just going to increase dramatically now you're going to still focus on full service and the 16 17 20 50 million dollar deals right right so above. so just as a, a maybe a recap from the last time I was here. Yeah. 2017, the way that year wrapped up, um, two-thirds of the sales in Orange County, well, actually Southern California, let me rephrase that, for Southern California, were in that $15 million or less space. Right. Uh, which is quite a bit of number of transactions, over 200 transactions. Now, out of those 200, some were direct. Uh, some might be considered just refinances, mm-hmm. but as far as true uh, ownership changing hands, right. it was quite a high percentage. Um, and we realized at CBE that that was a space that needed to be serviced properly with professional services. Um, and so Michael and Matthew joined and, and are, are approaching that great. that open space. Uh, I'm overseeing overseeing the whole operation, but I will focus on basically 15 million and above. That market goes all the way up to about 100 million. We cap out at that number. There are other institutional grade brokerage houses mm-hmm. in Southern California that. Uh, we just don't feel we want to compete in that space. Right. Um, and a matter of fact, as you get higher up in price, it's like going up in the atmosphere. It, the yeah. opportunities get thinner and thinner and thinner. And thinner. Yeah. Um, being from Southern California, having, again, known you for so long in this market, one of the interesting things we find is that the buyers in that space versus maybe more on a national platform are generally very strong regional players that have grown in the market along with my career over this time. Right. Um, one of my clients is when I first met him was general manager of Howard Johnson's. Now he owns 40 hotels mm-hmm. and very capable of paying, you know, uh, good solid numbers, uh, low loan to value on his debt requirements That's... and an amazing capital stack on closing properties. So that market still remains very active and high demand. And obviously with the, um, with the mid market opportunities, uh, we're seeing, Activity already. Already, um, we started this group probably in total, maybe back in May, is when we really kicked it off. Okay. Um, we have a number of things active right now, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit, mm-hmm. uh, and we have a number of things germinating, so to speak, and waiting to see if we can get to you know second base with some opportunities. There you go. Now, with with all the construction that's going on now across the state. Mm-hmm. How are you seeing that impacting this fifteen million dollar and below space? Well, let's. I'm going to answer that, but I'm going to take a half step back just for a second. So, um, on a national basis, uh, maybe a surprise to some, maybe not. But 2019, which CBRE Hotel Advisors just came out with a report that we're expecting probably about a nine percent increase in hotel demand. Mm across the country, country yeah. right? And obviously this is all subject to specific submarkets. Sure. But what that is saying overall is that with respect to your question about the cranes, there's uh, an increase in demand and yet the supply on a national basis of new product coming on is below that number. Number, yeah. Right, so um, being maybe a little more specific as you look across Southern California, and I think where you're gonna see the most cranes is gonna be Anaheim yeah. by mm-hmm. Disneyland. You're seeing a 20 plus percent increase in yeah. room count over the next, two years uh and if you look at who those developers are they're all local owners right and so they're not going to cannibalize their existing off uh, hotel product yeah uh so there's a, a strong belief that disneyland is underserved for room count correct um the national market looks at that and gets scared right away until they really step in and understand that you've got hotels operating in 90 plus percent That's occupancy uh, and you've got Star Wars opening up yep. next summer. Yep. You have Marvel Land, whatever they're going to call it, coming up uh, following that. And then the other little thing that nobody really thinks about too much until you're really in the market is that Disneyland celebrates every five years another five-year anniversary. Mm-hmm. And those anniversaries don't That's last right. for six mm-hmm. months. They last for 18 months. Right. So there's always going to be demand there. And with the expansion of the parks, you're just going to see continued 
um, interest in that marketplace. So uh, to answer your question about all the cranes in the space, uh, subject to specific markets, I think we're underserved overall, oh. and I think we're going to see, at least through 2019, uh, continued strong demand and, and interest in hotel product. I couldn't agree with you more on that. I think you're absolutely right. And I, th I think, you know, the, the little disagreement, let's say, that that uh, Disney and the city of Anaheim are having right now and, and postponing that, you know, right. high-end resort that they were going yeah. to build. Um, I think that helps out the rest of the market, personally. I think, and, and again, you're right. We've got a lot of local owners mm -hmm. so it's definitely an opportunity yeah they're they're jumping on that market and yep. and you're looking at you know we still have a problem with branding in, in the area and, and running out of brands i think we've launched one new brand every month for mm -hmm. the past 45 months so you know we're probably due for another two or three by year's end and we'll and we'll see where we go with that but i think it's also interesting you're seeing some of the other brands that are coming in right now, whether it's a soft brand or more of a boutique feel, um, it'll be interesting to see how those play out in, in the Disney market, because typically that really hasn't been a family-focused hotel. It's been more couples or business or you know leisure, but not, not with children. So I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. For that sector. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, we were at the Grand Californian a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, one of the highest per room rates in the market, yep. if not the highest rate, uh, and it was full. Yeah. yeah. Right. And you look through the lobby, and you know these are people that have probably saved for a year or two to come out with a family with the of kids. four mm -hmm. or six, and not only did they have to pay for the airfare, but they're willing to pay the freight on that type of hotel and stay right. on, you know, top shelf, and then they've got the additional park cost access. of the park. But mm -hmm. um, I, I think with the newer product coming in, whether it be a Westin. Um, or St. Regis, you know, there's been talk about getting St. Regis in that right. market, or even if Disney ever decides to rebuild that product, there is a demand for that level of quality yes. in that marketplace. And right now it's not being serviced. Um, I think people look for it and, and will use it. And, you know, you're going to get still the guys that are coming in even for the convention space that might have tough or tight expense budgets, mm -hmm. right. but you're still going to get the executives that are going to come out and say, well, you know, I, I could spend a little more. Yeah. So um, the JW is under construction. The right. Westin, as I mentioned before, is right. under construction. They'll be the first two out, um, open and, and ready to operate. And I think they're really going to be uh, the high tide that lifts the rest of the, of the market. Market, yeah, yeah. yeah. So how, how far how far from that epicenter do you think that ripple effect will will go, Rod? I mean, Anaheim is sort of a bit of a unique situation because of that year round draw. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we we do have people that are cautionary about just overall market conditions. Sure. 2019, 2020. And so from that epicenter, as far as Orange County and beyond, what do you think? Is, it, is this going to be kind of a common thing that we're going to see across the county, or is it just going to be in certain pockets like Anaheim? You mean with the demand? Uh, yeah, with the development? yeah. 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 A Anaheim, and when I say Anaheim, I really mean the intersection of Catella and Harbor. That's that's really, <laughs> that in most people's mind is what Anaheim is, is, even yeah. though it goes all the way out to Beach Boulevard. Anaheim and, Hills. And, right. Yeah. It, right. All the way out to 91. It yeah. really is when they, when you talk to investors and they say they want Anaheim, uh, it's an automatic assumption it's Cattell and Harbor that, spot, that yeah. they're looking at, which is ground zero. And what makes that market interesting, if you take the five freeway, which bisects that region in right. a 45 degree angle, um, the demand interest shifts the minute you cross or go over the bridge or under uh, the five freeway. You're right, it does. Right? There is still demand immediately over the bridge, although it's slightly less than if you are on the south side yeah. of, of the five. And the same thing being on the west side of the five. There is new development going on um, just north of the five on Anaheim Boulevard. Um, and that'll be a real interesting test to see how that hotel operates compared to the others. Mm -hmm. But one of, the hot one of the benefits of that location is that what is going on in the Golden Triangle, which is straight down Catala towards Anaheim Stadium. But there you throw another curve because the yeah. Angels just announced that, yeah. you know, they're on an they're option really period right now what they're going to do. Right. And there's we can go on a huge tangent there. I have no idea, but what are their other options except leave Anaheim mm -hmm. if they're not going to be at that stadium? Well, let me give you let me give you a scenario. Okay. Okay. The scenario. the Angels move to Irvine, get a new stadium. 
Disney buys Anaheim Stadium. Yeah. Tears it down. It's gone. They erect. I love this idea. In, in, in a, a <laughs> massive parking structure, throw half dozen hotels in there, and the monorail goes from there over to uh, the main so gate at the park. To- I'd have to see what the appraised value, and they just came out with it, and I don't recall what the number is, but they did appraise the value of the stadium. Yeah. And so the city, I'm sure, would look to try and recoup whatever value that is and whether or not it would pencil as, oh, for a group of hotels or other business park. I mean, you can, you can do, it's I mean, an interesting idea. Yeah. The, at the same time, you got to remember, Disney's had that excess land on the southeast for corner ever. of, right, yeah. for a potential third gate. Yeah. And that hasn't happened yet. Right. So that does make a statement about what they feel. You know the demand capacity is maybe for another another large area. That's very, that's very yeah. interesting. But I, I think it, you know, and I, I really think that if you look at Anaheim Stadium, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, dirt value is one thing. Income generated by the games and concerts and monster trucks and all the rest of it, you know, I think is just a a, a nice layer of icing on the cake. But you know, I don't think it can compete with what Disney can can do there. If if they can mm-hmm. stop bickering and get, and, get, and get together, Proximity does the, to does the, the third gate open too. up? Does the new resort open yep. up? Do they get a series of hotels, another concert venue, maybe a smaller amphitheater, mm-hmm. um, and a few other things? You have food and beverage components, obviously, and hopefully something that's that was better shopping than what uh, the Garden Walk was when it first opened. Uh, is mm. that that did not hit at all? Mm. Right. Um, yeah, they. They should have dropped a hotel on top of the parking structure there. Still an option. Have, yeah, still an option. They should have Actually, done... Actually, more timeshare is what they're considering, considering. To on top of the parking structure, right? Yeah. Which, not a bad idea either. Mm. Uh, but I think a, a nice hotel would, would be the right play there. House of Blues and, and Foundation Room opened up over there, left downtown Disney, along yep. with a lot of other people, mm-hmm. on the initial plan that was going to happen there. So, you know, I mean, when I, I remember walking into the Garden Walk initially and I'm seeing a Tommy Bahamas <laughs> and, and a few other things, and I'm going, what is this? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I, sorry, I'm not going to buy a lounge chair at a Tommy Bahamas in Anaheim. This is not what I'm here for. Mm-hmm. So let me ask Matthew and Michael a question each. What excites you about your territories? Matthew, you want to start and then we'll yeah, go sure. over to Michael? <laughs> yeah, I think what excited about me, about, uh, the opportunity is obviously... Uh, working with Rod, who's obviously best in class in, in Southern California. And those markets that I'm focused on have a lot of demand generation uh, mm-hmm. opportunities. You, you look at San Diego, and you're never going to run out of people that want to go to t- uh, all the tourist attractions in and around San Diego. Sure. And that carries all the way up to, to Orange County with Anaheim that we were just discussing. Yep. And even if you move out to the Inland Empire, I still think there's opportunities out there uh, for, for demand generation with corporations moving out there, uh, logistics centers, huge, huge operations like Amazon. And there's also, um, you know, uh, a- activists, you know, people like to do outdoor activities. Mm-hmm. It, you know, there's a wealth of opportunities on the desert for that kind of activity. I thought you were going to talk about protesters or something. <laughs> <laughs> for, further stuff. Yeah, yeah that, that, that also, that also uh, comes in. San Diego territory. Yeah. <laughs> that would be Disneyland. Uh, so, so, <laughs> oh, <laughs> good one. So, so, need a rim uh, shot on that one. <laughs> so, so, yeah, I think, I think all, all, all up and down, uh, you know, Southern California, there's a t- tremendous amount of demand generation. I think we're going to continue to see strong uh, demand generation uh, for hotels uh, all the way up through 2022 uh, at a minimum. I think demand is going to be very strong. Revenue in in all product types uh, from 5 million up to 20, and and, and that's the the products that I'm focused on. We see strong revenue uh, growth. Occupancy rates are going to be strong because of that demand generation. Mm. And I think that's, that's exciting. I think if you look at at uh, next year specifically, 2019, we've just uh, came through a decade of, of hotel expansion mm-hmm. where right. hotels have never been better. Uh, it's a great place to be uh, as an industry and an investor. And I think if you look to 2019, it would be a great time to sell uh, to maximize proceeds. I really believe that because of the run we've been on. And I think the fundamentals are extremely strong. And so that's what I'm advising clients on when, it, when I'm having my conversations and, and, and out in the marketplace. Great answer. Let me, let me prod you a little bit. Sure. What do you think about Ontario Airport? Are are they mm. starting to make a comeback now? Because that could be a huge demand generator as well. I mean, yeah. that I, that airport almost died at the hands of LAX. Mm. Uh, Wasn't there a discussion about a possible like uh, private uh, just jet terminal uh, or executive? Uh, 
there's, there's a couple of them couple going, of going on, on right one yeah. there and one further inland. But yep. I'm sure. I'm looking more at the the commuter mm-hmm. and I mean Ontario was built almost as an international airport, oh, yeah. but yeah. they never Super busy. You know they never. Yep. Took advantage of that, except for when the Concord used to come in yeah. once mm-hmm. every five years or whatever it was. So I, th- I think there's a big opportunity in Ontario, and I really like the Inland Empire because of the, the logistics space out there with the corporates. Yeah. And I think, you know, the the big distribution centers are going to dr- drive a, a tremendous amount of demand generation out there. And I like the universities out there. And Riverside and Loma Linda do a, good, a nice job. Good job, yeah. And I think that's going to bring a lot of families and students out there, and that's going to obviously fill up some hotel rooms. It's true. Yeah, and you're also looking at that billion-dollar world-class medical center and research facility coming in at Loma Linda. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I know a number of years ago with the board that was in play then, I proposed putting a hotel right right on the right in the parking lot, and that board was all on board. <coughs> We're gonna do a leasehold, and then the next board that came in said, nope, we don't want to do this. <laughs> went, oh. We don't want to be in the hotel business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know what's so. fascinating is in, in, I went to school at Clermont, uh, graduate school up mm-hmm. there in the Clermont Colleges, and it's always been under underserved. Served, yeah. Mm-hmm. Now that you think about it, it's actually always been underserved. There's, yeah. there's been a couple of, like, you know, older private helds, maybe. Mm-hmm. I remember when it was called, you know, the only Griswolds I knew was from your vacation movies. But, <laughs> yeah. You know, here I am basically going to college there. It's like a Griswolds motel at the end of, you know, on Indian yeah. Hill. Right. There you go. Right. But but it's always been underserved. So it's, yeah. it's, it's very interesting. Yeah. And Rod Rock can speak to this a little bit more than, than I can because it's, it's it's more of his listing. But there's a double tree in San Bernardino we have right now. It's one of the only full service hotels in the product. Hmm. And it had right. a nice, uh, a lot of eyes look at, a lot of interest. And, and so there, there's a lot of opportunities out there. Especially if you have full service product because it's it's in short supply in that market specifically. There you go. Well, you know, one of Rod's friends and mine, uh, 24/7 hotels. Mm-hmm. They've got what six, seven assets from Pomona, you know, through Ontario that they're they're managing now. And I think they just opened up what a Spring Hill Suites uh, a couple weeks ago. They had the grand opening on out there. Mm-hmm. So, Michael, what do you think? What 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 excites you about your your territory? So when it comes to L.A. County, I really think, you know, bustling growth when it comes to all the different (laughs) sectors. Anything from, you know, the ports that are going on at Long Beach, which, again, will help the infrastructure, which will hopefully drive more demand to, you know, you can't escape downtown Los Angeles through to the west side. But I think the most exciting part is what's going to happen right in the middle. Yeah. Because traditionally, you know, somewhere like MacArthur Park, the infrastructure was built up so much for a, a certain uh, wealth, right? And now it's almost uh, the complete opposite has come there. So I right. think we'll see the tide turn once more. Okay. A lot of the infrastructure start to grow in that middle market, and uh, I think my favorite part really is you know our platform attracts so much national and international attention that the reality is is when we take something out as a listing, it's yeah. hey, Mister Seller, yeah. The reality is the new buyer is probably going to be within a 10-mile radius. But right. the beauty of our, our platform is this is going to attract so much attention that when they know there's international eyes and national eyes on it as well right. as the regional, everyone comes in with guns blazing. Yeah, they do. I, I, I think you're absolutely right on target with that. What do you think of the San Fernando Valley? Hmm. Is that market is, – I, let's, let's carve out Burbank, Glendale. Let's just look at the valley you know, from – say north hollywood to calabasas and as far north as cal state northridge and uh as i refer to it the congo park or canoga park uh, <laughs> i grew up in the valley so i can get away so with that, that. <laughs> yeah um, so what kind of clubs I, did you go to yeah uh, too congo bad clubs. too bad yeah. uh but uh you know I, it, it always seems like especially around the university van nuys airport which has been mm-hmm. one of the busiest general aviation airports in history um you know is is always been underserved yeah there's a lot of old product product probably should be dozed and (laughs) something else come up so are you seeing opportunities out there yeah i mean if if we can all avoid the the heat that comes out there as well (laughs) i I, I really tax (laughs) yeah that that must be what the what's driving demand away from san fernando valley not 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 to be sort of like you know dancing on any ashes here but you know there was a lot of fires there's a lot there's a lot of construction that's going to basically be planned for up there and there's mm-hmm. probably going to be a lot of opportunities to reconsider and rethink 
certain ways things have been done before because it tended to be an area that got developed as almost an afterthought for any master planning. It was just like, you know, very, very bedroom communities. Porter know, Ranch was not really, really like a lot of centrals. Now. And this was a time before there was a lot of remote work. There's a lot of co-work. There's a lot of different ways of people basically working on things, you know, and, and, and having professional, you know, they didn't have to go into L.A., you know, but the communities around them weren't really built that way, and then they were basically adjusted to try to accommodate that. And now there's an opportunity to basically to reinvent the box. Well, again, necessity. provided it's not just, you know, open space that, you know, you're not referring to where you've got, exactly. you've got zoned areas. Exactly. You know, the biggest challenge that we've seen in the Valley for new developers is finding the sites. It's, as you said, it's a bedroom community. It's been built out for a long time. Yeah. So until you see a community try and go through a regentrification yeah. and allow for some rezoning, um, without major height restrictions, because the sites are so tight, you're going right. to have to go up, right. um, which creates, again, challenges for a developer to come in and convince the neighborhood that I'm going to have to do a shadow study mm -hmm. because my building's going to block whatever mm -hmm. view you may have. That's been one of the biggest challenges. Well, when you don't have a building there, Rod, that basically is going to get many views blocked, you, you might have a receptive ear because of just, you know, the unfortunate happenstance of what we just went through in that area. Mm -hmm. and, you know, that goes all the way down to Malibu. I mean, there, there may be opportunities here in L.A. that that are very pot turning a negative into a positive because of all the fires that we just went through. Similar to, you know, you, Michael, you mentioned Long Beach, and I think it's interesting that um, Everybody just kind of drives by there, <laughs> yeah, but they have a very receptive mayor. They have a very engaged, uh, you know, development office at the city. They they have reinvented a whole bunch of different resources and assets that they've had, including the arena. Um, I had an I had a opportunity to basically spend a couple of hours with the guy who basically runs the visitors bureau and and the convention center, and he shared with me a deck that they actually put out in Washington D.C. where they pitched the city as an international city, mm -hmm. and it has an interesting you know historical buildings for adaptive reuse. It, it's in in it has pockets and neighborhoods that can be gentrified and you know kind of like a draw, destination draw. And it's interesting because they're also looking at a little bit of a higher caliber resource. They're not looking. I mean, I remember a conversation where it's like, we're not looking at a Flemings or a Ruth Chris to come in. We want a Michael Mina. We want a, uh, you know, a Amar Santana. You know, we, we want that kind of stuff to come in. So it's an interesting time because I think it's a little bit under the radar screen for a lot of people Long Beach. It's a L.A. County success story. Yeah, and then yes. San Pedro's got yeah. a little history. I mean, it's a little longer reach there, but you know, you got certain pockets that are interesting. California Heights, residential homes are relatively decent for the price and the size of the properties you can get them for still. Airport location, you know, Long Beach Airport is right there. It's a very interesting and convenient usage, not too far from LAX. Orange County isn't that far away. It's an interesting. It's an interesting thing for Long Beach. I'm curious to see what's going to happen there. Well, that's a great transition, if you will, because we. Uh, just had maybe now three weeks ago a call for offers on the dual branded Hampton and Homewood, uh, right there on Liquid Boulevard, just yep. north of the Long Beach Airport. Yep. Um, we had a phenomenal turnout as far as buyers that were underwriting and looking at the asset. We had a great turnout for a number of offers. We this week will probably award um, the purchase to one of the candidates that uh, submitted offers on the property. And what I can tell you specifically about the assets, that that particular hotel, dual branded, mm -hmm. has been open now just over a year. It opened in November 2017, and it's running on the Homewood side. It's again, it's a dual branded with Homewood being an extended stay product and the Hampton being select service. Right. The Homewood is running about an 88, 89% wow. occupancy <laughs> in a year, wow. right? And the Hampton is running about 83% occupancy. Wow which by any standard, any measure, is extremely strong numbers. Yeah. And that hotel is uh, one of two hotels, the other one being the Courtyard, which are part of the Douglas Park development, mm -hmm. which right. is just, just north by of the, the airport. airport. Mm -hmm. a, a, and when we're speaking about Long Beach, Douglas Park is a market within itself. As we talk yeah. to prospective buyers, they're saying, well, what about potential new development off Cherry and the 405, mm -hmm. or what about other locations? And when you took a, an in-depth look at that sub-market, you realize that whatever new development is going to be over there and not impact us. Mm -hmm. And actually, I could look at that other development and mm -hmm. specifically look at that individual sub-market within Long Beach and mm -hmm. identify that, that mm -hmm. it would not be competing 
are being right. impacted by hotels in Douglas Park, for that right. matter, even hotels in downtown Long Beach. Right. So it is a very diverse market. Yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of good opportunity along the 405. Uh, basically, from, from Michael's standpoint, anything from the Orange County border mm -hmm. uh, north. Yeah. Um, you had the great developments right there in Redondo Beach off the freeway. Those hotels are doing very well. You do. And even though they're not, quote, on and the beach, beach, they yeah. have the Redondo Beach address associated yeah, with it. There's, yeah, there's a piece of property. I'm not sure if it's off Orange or Cherry. There's a piece of property that actually is an, is an old store and a lot of parking space, and it just hugs the freeway, just hugs the freeway, and it's been boarded up for a while. Mm -hmm. And it's really interesting because, to your point, Rod, I think, yes, just the fact that it's by the airport is its own microcosm. It's Long Beach still has that. I think the way that it got developed because of the harbor, because of the certain pockets of neighborhoods on the other side, and because of the the aircraft industry, there there's established traditional neighborhoods, established certain micro micro markets in Long Beach, mm -hmm. and it doesn't compete. Downtown is its own thing as well. And as you know, you go to you go to Belmont Shores and Naples, is that there's that whole that big development on Second Street that's going in that's commercial. Uh, so it's 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 being gentrified, it's being reinvented, and I think the most important thing is there's a receptive ear at the leadership level that is willing to take it that way and kind of smooth the path to get this thing streamlined, which is very interesting opportunity, a very interesting opportunity for Long Beach, and most people just drive by it on the way to Long Beach to L.A. or to Orange County. Mm. With that, we're going to take a small commercial uh, break for the California Lodging Investment Conference. We will be right back, and I'm going to share a tip with Michael while we're off the air so that none of the other brokers hear about it. We'll close our ears. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the observation deck of the Empire State Building to demonstrate how much... Say that again. Familiar with the Kilroy... <laughs> From Eureka to San Diego, from Malibu to Bakersfield, the California Lodging Investment Conference, CLIC, is a one-of-a-kind conference focusing exclusively on our Golden State's hotel market. CLIC was launched in 2016 to harness the knowledge of our industry leaders, support our community, and educate emerging talent. CLIC brings together lodging professionals from California and beyond for one day of learning, professional development, and networking. If you're in the California hotel market, or plan to be, you should attend CLIC 3 on March 7, 2019 at the Western South Coast Plaza Hotel. We invite you to check out the California Lodging Investment Conference website at cliconference.com for the latest details. Early registration now open, and as a listener of the Check Out California radio show, please make sure to use our exclusive discount code of CLIC, C-L-I-C, when registering for this one-of-a-kind California hospitality event that's sold out the last two years. And we're back. This is Check Out California, the CBRE Hotels edition. Um, you know, uh, we're going to have Rod talk about uh, the market right now and some listings. But before we do that, I want to announce to our audience that uh, CBRE Hotels and Rod Apodaca have become sponsors of the show. Rod will be joining us either in the studio or on the telephone. There we go. <laughs> well done, Paul. Uh, for four shows. And he will be discussing trends and market and all types of things that are going on in the hospitality sector in Southern California. So, Rod, I want to thank you uh, for being a part of Checkout California and welcoming your team as well. And uh, We're just trying to triple your uh, listening chip. So. I, I love I think it. you guys I just did. It. You showed up in the show. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe we can afford a bigger studio. Yeah. <laughs> So, Rod, let's, let's hear your thoughts on what's going on in the Southern California market right now. So, a couple of things. I, I want to start off talking a little bit about debt, which is always a, a big concern for all players. Um, even though you have buyers that say they're purchasing all cash, the reality of it is they're going to refi or put some type of debt on debt it, on, either yeah. eventually or while they're, they're in the due diligence process. There's been a little bit of concern about spreads. Uh, moving up, meaning uh, much more expensive interest rates on properties. Right. Mm -hmm. What we've actually real time have been able to find out is that we're seeing still aggressive 
uh, lending practices for the hotel space, both on the construction and the, and the permanent acquisition financing side. Uh, we've had owners being concerned that we, they might be looking at spreads of um, over 300 and maybe 400 basis points over LIBOR. Okay. Uh, we are seeing that, but yet for good quality product and good quality sponsors, the right debt yields, et cetera, we're actually seeing LIBOR plus somewhere in the 200s. Good. Okay. So there are still variable, very favorable financing out there for good quality assets. Uh, now, how long that's going to last is mm. the big gamble. And, right. Uh, alluding back to what Matt said earlier about 2019, I, I think the market in general, the buying community, is a bit nervous. You know, we've been riding this wave for a yeah. long time. Not to make right. a little, you know, surfer reference, but it, it's gonna gonna break somewhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we have high confidence that we're good through 2019. Beyond that is anybody's guess. Right. Um, but uh, on all the deals that we've been working at, uh, one of the primary vetting questions is who's your debt, who's your sponsor, right. uh, what type of rates are you looking at? Is it offshore money, U.S. money? Uh, and then how quick can you tie it up, the, your debt? Mm -hmm. um, and from the buyer's perspective, uh, they are, in some cases, using that as leverage, trying to work the prices down um, mm -hmm. with their sellers. However, CBRE, and a little plugger, has their own debt and equity services group. And so we have to the second Great news. Great tool for you on, guys. Yeah, we, have, we have to the second updates on what's available what they've actually funded, not just what a lender has promised them. Right. Um, we looked at a deal recently where the seller was concerned that we were being too aggressive on our interest rates, and lo and behold, um, our debt equity group did a inferior property and inferior location for 100 basis points less wow. than what we were quoting in our package because we we didn't want to oversell the, the, right. the, the debt potential. Right. Um, but we felt we were being safe and being a little high, and actually we were a little we quoted a little high because we figured we were going to be six months out from when that transaction would take place. Hmm. But in today's market, they were able to deliver 65% uh, loan to value, LIBOR plus 285, which is a pretty attractive rate, Very attractive. Um, at about a 65% loan to value. So oh. the capital's out there still for acquisitions, yeah. um, which is a good sign. Um, the buyer pool is still very, very active. Uh, again, subject to location and product type, everyone's looking sure. ideally for top shelf select service product, right, right. preferably fee simple, preferably non-union. Right. Um, but there's still a lot of interest, and in, and in because prices are still relatively lofty, we have a lot of development opportunities. Um, probably 50% of our efforts today are with guys calling us and saying, "Find me a site." Hmm. Right. I can build for. The smaller guys can do maybe 180,000 a door. Um, the larger developers, more high-end bells and whistles, might be for the same product, might be in the mid 200s or mm -hmm. high 200s. So, still very attractive. Still very attractive when you're looking at top shelf select service product Absolutely. changing changing hands between 250,000 per room mm -hmm. to 320,000 dollars per room. If guys can build less than that, they're going to look to build. Mm -hmm. Right. So we're seeing a lot of interest in. Everything from 30,000 square feet up to four acres, if they can find it, to try and fit whatever they want. So along those lines, another opportunity to talk about our deals. Yep. Um, we are launching, hopefully, uh, it's uh, everything always seems to slip a day or two, but hopefully this week, worst case, next week, a 2.8 acre site in San Marcos, and I'll let... Matt, talk about that sure. deal a little bit and let the market know what uh, what's going on as far as development type deals. Absolutely, yeah, no, uh, yeah, we've been working on this deal probably, uh, I'd say probably 45 days. It's it's a really uh, attractive piece of property. It's right, it's got great visibility from SR 78. Uh, if you're familiar with the 78 yep, corridor sure. over there, you know, it's really also known as the what Brewers Highway or something. <laughs> yeah, because all the highway. Highway. microbreweries <laughs> are going through there. Yes. Exactly. So it's it, it, it's really a fun area. It's it's got a lot of potential. It's it's got a the, you know I think San Marcos is the only uh, uh, Cal State University mm -hmm. uh, in the corridor, and it's got uh, the Stone Brewery World Bistro, uh, Golden Doors right down the street, sure. and, and so there's a a, a lot of uh, potential for the site, uh, especially with its proximity to the freeway exit and the visibility from the freeway. Uh, just a great parcel for a select service hotel, which we, hmm. again, what Rod was saying is that's what the uh, the community, uh, all the hotel uh, investors want it, want these days is that limited service with a top shelf brand. And this is a, a project that can definitely do that with some nice visibility in a San Diego market. 
How well, many acres is it again? Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, it's it's about two point eight acres, so it's it Very sets good. up. Yeah, it sets up nicely for one hundred ten to one hundred forty room uh, select service property. Well, I was going to also say that it's interesting about the timing because that's another one of those areas that uh, you know has experienced a lot of a lot more younger. Uh, families moving in, gentrification, improvements, yeah. you know, so it's sort of that when we had that whole development push for Bonzel and Fulbrook mm-hmm. and that, you know, larger pr- lots with avocado trees and for homes <laughs> when people couldn't afford to live in Orange County anymore and they were moving down south of the border, <laughs> other side of Pendleton. But yeah, no, as San Marcos has, I don't, a lot of people don't know, there's like, it's been there forever, an, a man made lake and there's some houses yep. on it and there's yeah. like, it's a restaurant there, I think, called the Decoy that's on that lake and, and yeah. it's an interesting draw for people that are it's north county for mm-hmm. people in san diego that don't really want to do the gas lamp they don't want to yeah you know live in the little neighborhoods right <laughs> or little italy they yeah. want to have a little bit more of a suburban experience people from orange county as well where they want a little bit more space and it's an interesting time for that actually yeah. and so. and not intentionally give them a plug but if you've never been to the stone brewery it's someplace um, you need to visit, visit. it's, Absolutely. it's yeah. a pretty amazing facility yeah and then right around the corner from us, I, I think it's already approved, right, for the Carl Strauss, the Carl Strauss. Brewery that's going to be coming in. Yeah. Um, and that's a block and a half away. So wow. It's not the same off-ramp as our, as our, as our site. So. Right. So it's so just going to be a great location. we anticipating, as I said, hopefully launching tomorrow, maybe early next week. Mm-hmm. But I think we're going to get a lot of attention on that. Yeah. Um, again, one of those things about a day delay here and there, uh, we have a, a pretty large deal by LAX. We've been waiting for the Marriott PIP to come in, which we go. just got in. Um, and the new 2019 budgets came out yesterday, so we're consolidating all of that, and that'll be put into the OM this afternoon. And ideally, that gets launched next week, and I'll let Michael talk about the Four Points LAX. So it's on Airport Boulevard. Okay. 568 rooms. Wow. Beautifully appointed lobby. Yeah. <laughs> Meeting spaces large enough and in, in line with the market, what, what's around it. Um, yeah. Definitely a big management opportunity for any uh, buyer that comes in. We're hoping to launch this upcoming week. That's a yeah, it, it, it is it is awesome. a union hotel, yeah. um, but there are op- operation opportunities for an upside mm-hmm. um, with the property. There are um, some upgrades that it does need. You mentioned the meeting space; they look great, but that's probably the major item that's required for the hotel. Yeah. But we have a very motivated seller that's looking to uh, transact. And ideally, we'll schedule that so we will probably be in our final reviews during Alice, the hotel conference. Very good. And um, we'll probably have our best and final probably the week after that. So we give a chance that for people flying in that will be in L.A., have a chance to go see the property. Um, they'll be driving right by it anyway when they fly in LAX. So well, it's there a, you a go. Great opportunity. And right after Alice, you'll be on the show, and you guys can talk about that, and we can go from there and also get your, your opinions on Alice. Sure. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's awesome. Yeah. So we also currently have in the market a Hilton Garden Inn in San Diego off the 15 mm-hmm. on the south side of Kearney Mesa, about five minutes north of the 8. Okay. Um, the property went through a complete uh, conversion rehab from a Holiday Inn to a Hilton Garden Inn. In fact, the, yeah. the quality of the work is so good. Um, Hilton did a PIP, and for those in the industry, they know what that is, but a PIP is a property improvement plan. Typically, the brand comes in, and for a transfer PIP, that's for the new owner, they will require a lot of new items at the brand, current mm. brand standards. Right. This is the only hotel, Hilton product hotel I've ever worked on, where Hilton actually did a desktop PIP, where they basically wrote us a short letter and saying, it's properties in great shape, and whatever you need to do is basically touch up some furniture, and it's going to be very, very paint, minor. That's it. That's yeah. Very, very, very <laughs> minor. So um, for the investors out there that are looking for a turnkey deal that still has upside in its operations, that's wow. a great opportunity. Yeah. Uh, the challenge for some, it's on a ground lease, but it is a long-term ground lease, and it's a market-negotiated ground lease, so there's nothing yeah. onerous about it. So, you know, when you have a ground lease that goes out to 2096, it's almost like buying a fee simple deal because there's right. so much time. The bank right. will look at it as right. a fee simple type yeah. transaction. Yeah. Um, so, let's see what else. We have the Red Lion um, by Disneyland. Yes, that you uh, announced on this show, your yeah. first time on. We are hopefully within two weeks of uh, selecting our candidate for that. Um, Very good. Again, that market being what it is had a great turnout. Mm. Uh, another property on a, on a ground lease, long term ground lease. Yep. But again, because it is Anaheim, um, everyone came out, took a look at it, and we're just trying to figure out now who's our best candidate to 
to seal the deal. Very good. So that's going well. Um, let me throw some others out there. So on the development side, we still have, um, let's see, we've got Simi Valley under contract for 120 plus room select service product. Okay. Uh, we put Fresno development right next to Cal State Fullerton uh, into a joint venture on a development deal. Hmm. Very, Very attractive good. ground lease was negotiated with the university where um, if you do the math, a typical ground lease is anywhere between five and a half to seven and a half percent of gross revenues. Right. This works out to about a half percent of gross revenues wow. on the ground lease. And love it. I, I love Fullerton. I no, no, Fresno. Oh, Fresno. Fresno. Oh, okay, sorry. But the attractive thing, even beyond the, the amount, and this is just interesting from a um, understanding ground lease perspective, that the ground lease adjusts once every 10 years. Hmm. However, if you prepay the first 10 years, they forgive all of your payments thereafter. Wow. Yeah. So very attractive structure, and we had a number of groups clamoring for it. Congratulations. We're under joint venture on that. <laughs> um, Give them their money up front. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Make them happy and deliver mm -hmm. a product for them they'd like. Right. Um, San Marcos, we mentioned. Um, what else is on our list here that we've got going? Um, Hollywood Park, uh, the football stadium. Mm -hmm. uh, the stadium, as you know, is going to be home to both the Chargers and the Rams. We have the only hotel development site on the market. We, again, these are all close to being finalized, and I think within before the end of the year we'll know where we're at on that property. No, Please make sure I get huge. your press releases. We can you know, certainly mention them on the show we'll along share with them you bringing them, and then we can also post them on the uh, California Lodging Investment Conference uh, blog as well. Yeah. So. So hotel development sites, you know, create nuances on their own, especially when it comes to city approvals, mm -hmm. timing, underwriting. Um, everyone likes to think their site is development ready, yeah. uh, but you jump into it and it, you find nuances that may delay you a bit here and there. Yeah, you always do. On occasion. On occasion. <laughs> yeah. um, what else? That's, that's it for now. Other things that we have in, in motion, probably a little too early to talk about, but next time I come in, we'll have some new things to discuss. No problem. I, that's I, great. I, I actually have a question, Rod, and it goes back to you adding these gentlemen to your team. There's, there's, you, you guys all mentioned the fact that 15 and under mm -hmm. was underserved. Why was it underserved? I think because the hotel space, compared to apartments, office, industrial, et cetera, is a pretty finite group. Mm -hmm. right? And so where, where people like to spend their time and activities, obviously, maybe on larger deals, maybe more high profile, right. the smaller deals tend to be more family owned. Mm -hmm. um, and you find that the representation out there is a friend of the family um, or an associate or someone that came out of the residential side and trying to enter the marketplace. Right. And they really don't have, A, the database of, of principals and players. They don't understand uh, the, the capital stacks, the debt, the equity side. Um, and they just, it's the only non-leased real estate asset, true real estate asset that you're not going out to somebody and say, here, sign this document, you're going to pay me an income stream for X number of years. You know, you're effectively vacant every night. Right. 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 Um, so it's an ongoing business. So there are unique challenges to it. And I think that, again, it's underrepresented in the quality of the brokers that are out there. Uh, it, it, there are other, there are some groups that do focus on that space, but it's very limited. And when you consider that two thirds of the transactions in Southern California are in that space, and you have one or two boutique yeah. brokerage houses that are focusing on that, it, ultimately it's a disservice to the owners, because as we know through CBRE, is that our buyers are not only regional and will come from right down the street, right. but you also find that someone's got a brother or an uncle or an auntie that are looking right. to get into Southern California, yeah. that are based in Ohio, that yeah. are based in Florida, and although they may not be here, they have real relatives here that know the space, mm -hmm. and you get money now coming in from out of state or offshore mm -hmm. um, that are looking to buy, and we have that much broader reach. Sure. There we go. Now, I, I asked the question because, because I just wanted to thank you very much for clarifying that because, yes, the quality wasn't there. And it, that was a disservice to the. I'm sure some of our competitors won't appreciate that comment. Well, but. I'm not. I'm not knocking anybody, but it's it, it it's not only limited to the hotel industry. I think there's always that sweet spot sometimes mm -hmm. where it's just under underserviced, and then the volume is at such a point that quality service basically steps in and says there's an opportunity here. So right. yeah, that's it. And, and we really think there's a, a very big opportunity to service mm -hmm. space that hasn't had the quality of someone like a CBRE come in and, and right. help them out. Yeah. There we go. Well, you know, 
we are wrapping this up now. I want to thank everybody for coming and joining us today. Rod, we're looking forward to you being a part of the show. Thank you. Absolutely. And today's show has been brought to you by Rod Gantos and Associates. Thank you very much. And it's Pleasure. also been brought to you by Park West General Contractors. Thank you, Ed and Chris. And we are out of here. We will be back next week. We have got uh, uh, a friend of the show. He's one of our early guests, mm-hmm. Weston Spiegel. Uh, he Tell us is all about the, the hotel. general manager of the brand new Park James, James. in Menlo mm-hmm. Park. Um, I was up there for the grand opening. It is a beautiful hotel. Uh, quite a story on that. So one of our first guests, that. Weston. Yeah. Yep. Great. Awesome. Paul, thank you. Gentlemen, thanks, thanks for being for here. Us. Thank you. Thank, yeah. you Thank you for guys. being our guest today on Check Out California. We look forward to having you as a guest with us again in two weeks. Until then, you can always reach us through our Check Out California Facebook page or by emailing us at checkoutcalifornia at gmail.com. We love hearing from you. So do let us know what you think of the show and what areas of interest you'd like to see us cover in the future. Your feedback is very important to us as we continue to bring you the best hospitality our Golden State has to offer. Until next time, may all your days be filled with sunsets and palm trees. Now, go experience and check out California.